good morning and welcome to Legacy Baptist Church. So glad that you're able to join us today and we look forward to worshiping together with you this morning. And as we begin our service, as we direct our hearts uh, towards the Lord this morning, I'm going to be reading from Psalm 96, if you'd like to join me there. Psalm 96, and I'll be reading the first four verses. The Bible says, Oh, sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Sing unto the Lord, bless his name. Show forth his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the heathen, his wonders among all people. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. And let's praise him today as we sing our songs and as we look to him uh, during the preaching that he'd be glorified in all that is done in the service. So let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we're grateful for who you are. Lord, we're thankful for your faithfulness to us. We're thankful for your salvation. And Lord, I pray that you would just put your hand upon this service, Lord, and bless all aspects of it. And I pray that it would be honoring to you and glorifying, Lord, that the words from our lips would be praise unto you. And Lord, as your word is preached this morning, I pray that your spirit would work in all of our hearts. And that, Lord, the way we came in today would not be the way that we leave. And that we cha- that you change our lives, Lord, that we draw closer to you. And, Lord, I pray if there's one who is here today that doesn't know you as Lord and Savior, that today they'd make that choice and call upon your name. And we pray these things in your son's holy and precious name. Amen. Thank you. 
Amen. Let's all stand up, please, as we sing glory to his name. And now, Mix will come to us, uh, lead us in song. Let's all sing together. The first verse. All right. Down at the cross where my Savior died, down where for cleansing for sin I died. There to my heart applied, glory to his name, glory to his name, glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood applied, to his name. I am so wondrously saved from sin. Jesus so sweetly abides within, there at the cross where he took me in. Glory to his name, glory to his name, glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood applied, glory to his name. Oh, precious fountain that saves from sin, I am so glad I have entered in. There Jesus saves me and keeps me clean. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was a blood of light. Glory to his name on the last. Come to this fountain so rich and sweet. Cast thy poor soul at the Savior's feet. Plunge in today and be made complete. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. Amen. Remain standing for our next hymn. Higher ground, higher ground. <clears throat> On the first, I'm pressing on the upward way, new heights I'm gaining every day, still praying as I'm onward bound. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land, a higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. My heart has no desire to stay Where doubts arise and fears dismay Though some may dwell where these abound My prayer, my aim is higher ground Lord, lift me up and let me stand By faith on heaven's table land Higher plain than I have found Lord, plant my feet on higher ground I want to live above the world, though Satan's darts at me are hurled. For faith has caught the, the song of saints on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land. A higher plane than I have found, or plant my feet on higher ground. I want to scale the utmost height and catch a gleam of glory bright. But still I'll pray till had I found. Lord, lead me on to higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land. A higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. Great crowd here with us this morning. Just uh, want to share uh, our announcements. You know, as we get through the lull of the winter in uh, January and February, we kind of have a, a dry patch. But as we enter into the spring, lots of things start happening and things start picking up. That's true for all of our lives, but especially here 
at church, and we're excited for the end of this month as we focus around the Easter season and the resurrection of our Savior. And on March 24th, uh, that is a Sunday, that is Palm Sunday, and we're excited to, uh, to uh, celebrate uh, the resurrection or to celebrate the coming of Jesus Christ in, as he enters into the city. Uh, but that Sunday, we have the choir that will be presenting a cantata, and we actually have a clip that our social media team uh, created, just a little teaser of what the choir is doing, the work that they're putting in for that cantata. So we hope that you'll join us for that Sunday, and the choir is putting in a lot of work, a lot of sacrifice time, and Saturdays that they've given up uh, to present that, and hopefully they will be a blessing uh, to you. And then on March 28th, that's a Thursday at 7 p.m., we have our focus on Calvary, and we hope that you'll join us here at the church as we focus on the Savior's uh, journey to the cross. Then, of course, Easter Sunday, which is March 31st, we'll be meeting here at 9 o'clock as we celebrate the resurrection of our Savior. And on that Sunday, we'll only be having a 9 a.m. service. We will be having refreshments and things like that afterwards in the East Wing, uh, but there will be no official 11 a.m. service on that day. And then uh, a few things that we look forward to next month as we uh, get into the spring. Uh, we're going to be having outreach on April 6th. That's Saturday at 1030. And uh, we're going to be beginning to do monthly outreach, uh, which we'll be trying to uh, do the first of every Saturday, so if you can get that on your calendar, it's always a great time to get out into our community, hand out literature, or knock on doors and share the gospel of Jesus Christ. And of course, there's always tracks available if you'd like to take those and hand them out during the week, uh, but we look forward to uh, coming together as a church uh, to reach our community with the gospel. And then, at church, you know, we really want to serve you guys and to be there for you. We want to be a church where we're growing together where we're thriving as believers. And we have lots of different ministries. You know, we have a place for the kids. Uh, every Sunday we have Kids Church. Uh, we have Youth Crew, which is our youth group. If you're a teenager, we'd love for you to be a part of our youth uh, group, which takes place. Uh, we have a gym night uh, that happens once a month and uh, different activities. And then we have True North, which is our college and career group. Uh, that's for people in their uh, 20s. And there's a Bible study that we have once a month. Uh, but there's a new ministry that we'd like to introduce to the church, which is going to be called CORE. And that is going to be for our 30s and 40-year-olds, uh, those in the middle age category. It's more people that are um, career-oriented, uh, married couples, young families. Uh, we want a place for you to grow and to thrive together, a place for you to fellowship. And our first CORE group will be on April 20th, that's a Saturday. We're going to try to do it every, sat uh, every third Saturday of the month to have a Bible study or an activity. So if you're in that bracket of the 30s, the 40s, uh, mark that on your calendar. We'll have more details. We'll be going bowling that day. Uh, but it's just a really, a really a place that we want to be able to come together as a church. Uh, it stands for the idea of uh, cultivating a growth with our Savior and cultivating a growth together outreach within our church and trying to reach those uh, that maybe are slipping through the cracks. Uh, we want everyone to have a place uh, reflecting upon our lives and seeing how that affects our relationship with Christ and equipping one another to serve each other better and to be unified as a church body. So just another ministry, another way that we at Legacy would like to see you come together and to grow as a church body of believers. And of course, there's always a place to serve. Maybe you're here today, you're new to the church, and you say, well, I want to be a part of something, I want to serve, and I don't know where my place is. Come speak to myself, speak to pastor, and we love to get you involved in the church in one way or another. At this time, I'd like to invite the ushers to come forward as we prepare to take this morning's offering. Uh, just a reminder, if you'd like to give to the VBS for the summer, uh, that would be $10 per kid if you'd like to sponsor a kid. That will help uh, just cover the cost of uh, their T-shirt and things like that. And as well, don't forget that if you have spare glasses that you'd like to give to Medical Missions Outreach, there's a box out in the foyer. All used glasses can be inserted in the box. And I actually got a postcard from MMO this week. Uh, we had sent in the past a full box of glasses, and it takes time to process it where they read all the glasses, figure out the prescription, they ship it worldwide. 
our first box of donations have been shipped internationally and are being handed out to people all around the world. Uh, and the gospel message is being shared. So thank you for donating to that cause. So let's pray as we take this morning's offering. Our dear Heavenly Father, Lord, once again, we're just grateful for the blessings that you bestow upon our lives. Lord, the care that you have for us and taking care of our needs. And Lord, I pray that you just bless this offering now. Bless the giver and bless the gift. And I pray that we'd use it for the furtherance of the gospel message here in our community and all around the world. And we pray these things in your son's holy and precious name. Amen. Passing tight down at the jail that night, still Paul and Silas would not be dismayed. They said it's time to lift our voice, sing praises to the Lord. Let's prove that we will trust him, come what may. God wants to hear you sing when the waves are crashing round you, when the fiery darts surround you, when despair is all you see. God wants to hear your voice when the wisest man has spoken and says the circumstances as hopeless as can be. That's when God wants to hear you say. He loves to hear our praise on our cheerful days, and the pleasant times outweigh the bad by far. But when suffering comes along, and we still sing him songs. That is when we bless the Father's heart. God wants to hear you sing when the waves are crashing round you, when the fiery darts surround you, when despair is all you see. God wants to hear your voice when the wisest man spoken and says your circumstances as hopeless as can be that's when god wants to hear you sing god wants to hear you sing when the waves are crashing round you when the fiery darts surround you when despair is all you see God wants to hear your voice when the wisest man has spoken and says your circumstances as hopeless as can be. That's when God wants to hear you sing. Oh, wow, we've been blessed already by the music and things, and we have something special right now, and that's a baby dedication. So come on down, Mr. Zane, with your dad. What? Which side is better for pictures? This is the side. That's all right. That's all right. That's, that's family, right? It's lonely. We're so glad that uh, the candles are part of our family, and we're so glad that they're all here today. And coming to acknowledge that uh, 
their dependence on the Lord to raise Zane and their other daughters as well. They're, they're here, and they're happy they're here. And I know there's all kinds of family here uh, for Zane today, and uh, we appreciate you. And you have a very important role as well. As Zane grows, you're there as a help and encouragement. And we're so thankful. I know the candles are thankful for you. And Legacy Baptist Church, uh, we get a part, a little part to play to encourage the Canos as they raise Zane for the honor and glory of Jesus Christ. We get to encourage them because if you've been a parent, you know there's days that you need encouragement, amen? There are days that are down or slow or not what you expect. Uh, we have sometimes images of what things should happen and they don't. And we get the opportunity to encourage them on Sundays during the week and, and don't take it for granted. And I'm so thankful this morning that they desire, Brian and Kylie, that their son Zane would serve the Lord. In your bulletin, uh, you'll find a portion of scripture I'm going to read for you. You can follow along in that. And that's Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 to 9. This is the, to the children of Israel, uh, but it's for us as well. There's application for us. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. Thou shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thy house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up, and thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thy hand, and shall be as frontlets between thy eyes, and thou shalt write them upon the post of thy house and on thy gates. Train up a child, Proverbs 22, 6 says, Chain up a, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for Zane. Lord, I pray that you would put your arms of love and compassion around him. Help mom and dad as they raise him for your honor and glory. Lord, I pray that as extended family, as church family, we will be a help and encouragement Guide him in all his steps, we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's give him a round of applause. Amen. Let's all stand up as we sing Rejoice in the Lord. And kids at this time are dismissed for Kids Church. Right on the first. God never moves without purpose or plan when trying a servant and molding a man give thanks to the Lord though your testing seems long in darkness he giveth a song oh rejoice in the Mistakes he know at the end of each path that I take. For when I am tried and purified, I shall come forth as gold. I could not see through the shadows ahead, so I looked.
Let's go. Amen. You may be seated. It certainly is good to be here this morning, and I appreciate it. Thank you for being here, and it's a blessing to have you. Um, and for those who are watching online, I know some of our folks are still sick, getting over that flu and things, so let's keep them in prayer. But uh, glad that we have that online, that folks can join us and enjoy the worship together. Uh, before we get into the message, I just want to uh, bring a praise and a, re a request, uh, a prayer. Uh, praise the Lord for all the work that was done Quinty Baptist Church, and we were able to go out there, four of us from our church, Obed, uh, Silas, myself, and my son Nathaniel, and we did lots of demolition work. So that means we are making a very good mess, and we had a great time doing it, and drywalling, and uh, hanging drywall, and then mudding, plaster, and things. Uh, so be in prayer for them as they got another three or four days with the group that's there. And I think uh, five other churches were represented there besides ours. So not a huge group, but uh, enough to get the work done. And they're very thankful for that. So let's keep them in prayer as they reach uh, their community, Trenton area with the gospel. And then let's be in prayer for next Sunday and Easter as uh, there's a, traditionally a little bit more folks who come out and uh, check out the services and things. They might not know the Lord as their Savior, but let's be in prayer for that that we could see folks out and being introduced to the gospel, planting the seed, and it would be lovely and wonderful to see someone come to know Christ as their Savior. So let's look to the Lord in prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you for this time. Thank you for the opportunity to gather together to worship you, to lift your name in praise. And Lord, as we look at what you have done in just a few moments, Lord, I pray that you would encourage our hearts to serve you. And Lord, we look forward to remembering and celebrating uh, your coming to Jerusalem to uh, be put on that cross for every man and woman that's ever lived. And Lord, as your resurrection as well on Easter, I pray, Lord, you'll allow us to see some visitors out and we get the opportunity to plant the seeds of the gospel. Uh, Lord, our greatest need today is the gospel. And Lord, I pray that we could see that. And thank you for uh, Quinty Baptist Church and it's uh, faithfulness in serving you and reaching folks there in that community with the gospel. I pray, Lord, you give them a, a great week to finish up their project there. And we're so thankful that we get to play a little part in that. And, Lord, I pray you encourage them today as they're having their services right now. Lord, I pray you watch over them. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You know, last week uh, we were looking in Acts chapter 3, and we, we looked at that lame man for a few moments, right? He was at the temple steps outside the temple, and... Uh, the lame man came to mind a lot to me this week, partly because I was walking lots of steps at that church and my legs were feeling very tired uh, and I uh, was having a hard time at the end of it to go up and I was like, do I really need to go up those stairs again? You know, I was questioning some things about that, but at any rate, I, I thought about him and, uh, you know, we saw how he's so excited. We saw how he held John and Peter and, and he was excited that they came and gave him the gospel, he accepted Christ as Savior, and his life was changed. His life was changed. He worshiped the Lord uh, down in, uh, I'll read you that verse. Uh, said, then Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have I give, I give thee in the name of, the, of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk, and took him by the right hand and lifted up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he leaped up, stood and walked, and entered into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. I don't think uh, anyone in the temple missed his announcement, his arrival in the temple. He was excited. He was blessed. He was changed. And, and this, I'll be honest, I had a totally different message as of last night around 1030. It impressed me to give this message to you. I was up early this morning writing it. And uh, it wasn't hard to write because it's what the Lord has done in my life. What has the Lord done in my life? Take your Bibles and turn over to James chapter number 5. James chapter number 5. James 5, and uh, we're really going to uh, focus on the um, uh, verse 16, but we'll, we'll, we'll start in verse number 13. Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing songs, uh, psalms. Any sick among, uh, among you? Let him call for the elders of the church, and let them pray over him, anointing him with the oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of the faith shall raise the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another. Pray one for another that ye may be healed. 
The effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man availeth much. You know, Christianity is not something that I can pass to my son. It's not like an inheritance where I write it up legally and give it to him or to my daughters, my sons, I should say. It's something that has to be accepted. And I'm so glad that my family has kept record of how Christianity entered in, and particularly my father's side of the family, how Christianity entered our family life and how generation after generation has made that decision for Jesus Christ. It all started with my great-great-grandpa, or great-grandpa, not two greats, who got saved as a child in a small fishing village in Newfoundland. The Salvation Army at that time would come into these little towns, these little villages, and have a, like a vacation Bible school. They didn't call it exactly that, but they would do those things, come in where there was no church, and present the gospel for a week. And during that week as a child, my great-grandfather accepted Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior, and it changed his life. It changed his life. He married after the First World War and had a family. And he prayed for all his family to be saved, that they would have trust in Christ. He constantly witnessed to his family. He was often mocked for his belief or ignored, uh, just ignored his testimony. He prayed for them for years and, and raised our children they tried very hard and were an example of good, godly living. And I'm so thankful for that. That is a, a blessing beyond any amount of money or buildings or materials. Just because, as I said earlier, uh, my great-grandfather and my grandfather and my dad and mom were saved didn't mean I was immediately saved. Just because you go to church doesn't mean you're saved. Now, there's, there's places out there, they call themselves churches, and you'll never hear of Jesus Christ being the only way. Right, so that, that, that doesn't matter. I, ha I had to make a decision. You have to make a decision for Christ. It's an individual decision. I'm so thankful that I had grandparents, my parents. They were always encouraging myself, my siblings, and cousins, and, and things of that nature, the next generation, to look to Christ to serve the Lord, to accept Him as our personal Lord and Savior. That was throughout my life. And, you know, I go see my grandfather today. He's in uh, um, Veterans Ward in, uh, in, in Toronto, and he still asks me. He's losing his mind, he, dementia and things. He still asks me, so how's things at church? He asks after you all the time. You've never met him. You'll get to meet him in heaven if you know Christ as your Savior. Still encouraging. When I was about 10 or 11 years old, I made a profession of faith uh, and profession of salvation. I was going to church all the time and Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. I mean, I spent, I was thinking about this this morning as I was writing this up. I spent more hours at church growing up than I did just about anywhere else besides my home. Because I would go to school there. The church was connected. We had a, a separate building, but we were always around church. My folks were the janitors of the church for a long time. I was there all the time, and I felt very connected. I loved the church I was going to, but just because I went to church and I loved the people there doesn't mean that I'm saved. And it won't make you saved just because you come to a church that's nice and friendly and you like it. You have to make that decision. I was involved in the ministries of the church with my folks. I couldn't tell you how many times I heard the message of salvation. I made that profession of faith really because I, I love my parents, I love my grandparents, and I know, I, I mean, I could witness, I could see how a life they had. That wasn't without trouble, but they had a joy and peace there that I could see other people didn't have. I knew what they had was real, and I wanted to please them. Well, that, that's nothing wrong with pleasing your parents, but when it comes to accepting Christ as Savior, it's your decision. It's your decision. I knew in my heart, even though I heard all those messages of salvation and, and, and testimonies, that I wasn't saved. I, did, I definitely did not hate church. I, I, see, I saw real people trying to serve the Lord, and they were helping out other people. Was, it, was there problems? Yes, there's problems everywhere. You know, there's hypocrites everywhere. I mean, no matter where you go, but I saw people who were trying to live for Christ. I said, you know, that's the real thing for them. 
but I was missing out. I mean, be honest, there's times I didn't like the rules. And I'm sure I meet lots of people today who would say the same thing. I didn't like all the rules as a kid or anything, but I endeavored, as I said, to please my parents. To, it wouldn't cause my parents too much trouble. I'm sure I did lots of trouble, but not too much. And I knew they loved me, and I knew they wanted the best for me. You know, as I grew up, the question of what was I going to do with my life, and I know I asked some teenagers in our church, and I can almost see in their eyes how I felt when I was that age. I didn't know. Stop asking. <laughs> uh, don't ask me that question, Pastor, or whoever it was. I don't know. And I didn't know what to do. My, my dad had offered me an opportunity to, to work in the family business, but that wasn't for me. I, I'm not a salesperson. That's not for me. I, I kind of looked at joining the RCMP or maybe the military, but ah, that didn't really pan out. So I applied to go to Faithway Baptist College. And they accept me. And you might say, now, Pastor Mark, why would you want to attend a Bible college and you're not even saved? Well, I'll give you a couple of reasons. One, I figured that's a good spot to keep me out of trouble. I wouldn't get into too much trouble there. You know, there's going to be rules there. And, you know, and, 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 you know I, I don't mind church. I like it. And I had a, a buddy of mine who was attending the college at the same time. I enjoyed his uh, friend, friendship. His name is Boyd Stansford. And I'll hang out with Boyd. And I thought, I might meet a nice girl, too. I'm going to be really honest. Okay? And uh, hey, both things happened. <laughs> I went there, had a good time, and I met a nice lady. And uh, she became my wife. But at any rate, uh, the summer before I went to college, I was turning 19, and I was visiting, We were as a family, we were visiting a family member's on the northern peninsula of Newfoundland. It's way up there, and lots of great fishing up there. And we went to a remote part of the, of the province to go fishing, and uh, all the nice ponds and rivers, pretty pristine, lots of great fish. But during that fishing trip, uh, we had, there was five of us who went. My cousin, a younger cousin who was 11, and my uncle fell in the river. And the current took them, and uh, my cousin fell in first. My uncle tried to rescue them, but they both drowned right in front of me as I was on the riverside. And I stood on that river bend. I know I couldn't help them. I don't even know where they went. And I was thinking to myself as I heard birds chirping, if that was me, I would be in hell. I would be in hell. I knew it, but you know what? I still didn't do anything about it. Talk about a long-suffering God. The multitudes of times I had to accept him as Savior, but I didn't do anything about it. So about a month later, I left Newfoundland and uh, started attending Baba College, and I enjoyed being with these guys, none of these guys knew what just happened a month ago. It was kind of nice. No one knew what took place. And uh, I can't say I always enjoyed my classes, but overall, it was good. I enjoyed it. After about a month being at college, I started to wonder if they were reading my mind at chapels. The messages that were preached were very convicting. I'm like, how do they know? How, how do they know? I'm not feeling very comfortable at these chapel services. I'm supposed to be happy. I'm not feeling happy right now. You know, it was conviction, right? The Holy Spirit was convicting my heart and mind. And, and listen, the reality is the Lord uses the preacher to bring the message that you need. There's been times people in this congregation have told me, Pastor, how'd you know? I didn't know, but the Lord knew. And isn't that amazing? The Lord knows. He cares enough about you to make the preacher preach that message. Absolutely. What amazing Lord and God that we serve. They were convicting, and, and the Holy Spirit was applying pressure concerning, you know, I need to make sure and take care of this issue of salvation. I can't put it off anymore. Look over in John chapter number 14. John, number, John chapter 14. Um, in April of 1996, I'm in Bible College, and they had the spring Bible conference there at uh, Faithway, and one of the speakers got up. And he was preaching a message from John chapter 14. 
Let not your heart be troubled, verse number one. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go, ye know, and the way ye know. He preached that message. And, uh, and I sat in the pew, probably five or six back on the right-hand side, and uh, I was sitting there. And it wasn't, don't, don't think I got saved so I can get a mansion, okay? That, that wasn't the, uh, the, the force behind it. I just realized I don't have a place in heaven. Not because God doesn't want to give me a place, but because I haven't accepted Christ as my Savior. And it, it finally struck home. I mean, it just, I, I, I got to get this taken care of. I mean, I, I knew that I was lost. I, you didn't have to convince me that I was a sinner. I knew that already, but I had to accept Jesus Christ as my Savior. So after the service that evening, I uh, went to someone I knew. I said, hey, we need to talk. And the fellow looked at me. He's like, oh, are you okay? I said, well, we, we need to have a serious conversation. I think at first he thought I was mad at him or something. And I was like, we got in a little room. I said, you need to tell me how to get saved. And he looked at me. I said, I know it, but I need to talk to somebody. In Romans chapter 3, verse 23. Romans 3, verse 23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Uh, again, I knew it was sinner. Right? That didn't, you didn't have to convince me. We all sin. There's no one perfect. I will never accept someone telling me that they're perfect. No, no, not possible. We're all born with that sin nature. We're all born with it. And then we went over to Romans chapter 6 and verse number uh, 23. For the wages of sin is death. Because of my sin, because of what I had done, and is my nature, there was a wage. There's a, 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 you know, a reality that it was death. And we're not talking about physical death. We know all men die, but this is speaking of a spiritual death, eternally separated from Jesus Christ. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. There's a gift. The gift is free for all. You don't have to do anything to earn it. It's a gift. You imagine at Christmas time, if we were around the Christmas tree or, you know, wherever you might do something, a birthday, and you're, you have a, something for someone, and you're like, well, I want to give you this, but you have to go clean my truck first. Is that a gift? No, you're, you're earning that thing, whatever it is. A gift is given because you're loved. I'll give you this gift. Eternal life is available to all. And then we went over to Romans chapter 5 and verse number 8. But God commended his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. God loves me. God loves you. So much that he sent his only begotten son to come to this earth and to die on the cross, to take the penalty, to sacrifice himself on the cross, and to raise again from the dead, to have victory over sin, death, and the grave. Then we went over to Romans chapter 10 and verses 9 and 10. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart, that God have raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. I placed my faith in Christ alone. You know, I was headed this way. I was headed, hey, I was a good person. I liked church. I was a good guy at church. I helped around the church. Sure, I told people about salvation. I still remember a little girl who was riding a Sunday school bus that I was on. Uh, Brienne was her name. And I told that little girl, Brienne, how to trust Christ as Savior, and she got saved. It's not the messenger who saves, it's Christ, amen? And she, I read her the verses, and she got saved. Meanwhile, I don't got to figure it out myself. I was headed this way, and I realized this way wasn't going to do anything for me. And I place my faith and trust in Jesus Christ and Him alone. And I was saved. It didn't take 14 weeks. 
it checked the moments of me turning from that and placing my faith in him. Like that. Like that. I'm so glad I did it. I was saved. A few weeks later, I got baptized, and my life was, is changed. But I was just starting my Christian journey, right? That's not the end. Accepting Christ as Savior, that's not the end. That's just the beginning. Lots of learning. Lots of failures. Lots of maturing. Now, I was not thrilled, I'm going to be honest, about uh, the future in some ways because I kind of figured the Lord was going to call me into the ministry. And, and I really, you know what I really didn't want to do? I didn't want to start a church. And you know what God said I needed to do? Start a church. You know, I didn't feel like it. I didn't think I could do it. But our God is all powerful. Amen. He does the work. We need to be willing to follow. Gave me a wonderful wife, a wonderful family. And I don't want you to think that it's all roses because there's times when things are not so great along the Christian journey. There's many ups and downs. We moved to Newfoundland uh, about three months after we got married. And uh, I never thought I would leave that island, to be quite honest, uh, besides vacation or whatever or visiting family, other places. I thought... I was going to die in Newfoundland. That's the way my mindset was. But about 10 years after we were there, the Lord opened the door and closed some doors and said, hey, you need to move to Brampton, Ontario. I'm going to be honest, it was very difficult for me. Same country, but very different. Very different. I don't, I, I don't know if this is how some of, I know many of you in our church are immigrants to Canada. I don't know if you felt this way when you came but I felt very alone, very alone. There was, I was surrounded by millions of people, but I didn't know anybody. Now, I didn't have a language. Well, maybe I do. I'm a Newfoundlander. And sometimes that gets in trouble. But at any rate, I don't much have a language issue. Uh, but the reality is I just didn't know anyone. I felt alone. And I'll be honest, it was heartbreaking to leave Newfoundland. It wasn't my plan but you know, when you go through hard times, the Lord's with you if you know Christ as Savior. Take your Bibles and turn over to Psalms, Psalm 73. Psalm 73. Just before we moved, we knew we were moving, and just before that happened, my brother was involved in a horrific car accident and we didn't know if he was going to live now he has lived he's still living and uh, many of you've met him he's come up to church a few times here uh, but it was very hard to leave he was still in a coma when we left and the lord gave me this verse in psalm 73 verse 26 my flesh and my heart faileth but god is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. I know you have been in places where your heart, your flesh has failed. There's only so much we can take, and it's pretty, some I know have a higher t tolerance, but we all have limits. And we can't do this on our own. But God is the strength of my heart. And you probably, just like myself on days, it's, just the next minute, the next second. It's not like thinking you're thinking years down the road. You're just, I just need to get through this meeting. I just need to get through this situation. God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. I was once like that lame man in Acts 3. I could not make it. I, I didn't have the ability. But then... I was introduced to Jesus, and he changed everything. Accepting Christ changed my life. If you accept Christ as your Savior, he'll change your life. He will. He'll change the life that you're living right now, and your eternal destination is changed. It's heaven. 
oh, we still have problems. I, I never want to sell, if you want to use that terminology, salvation as, oh, everything is going to be prosperous. Everything is going to be grand. You'll never have a problem. No, that's not true. You will. You'll face other pressures that you didn't face before. Maybe friends and family are like, why would you go do all that religious nut? You might face that. But we don't face them alone anymore if we know Christ has saved us. Because as you face that crisis, as you face that problem, maybe you face a tragedy, Christ is with you every step of the way to sustain us. And just like the poem about the footsteps, sometimes he carries us because we can't go another step. I've met people, I've seen interviews of people, and they say, have you any regrets in your life? And some of them, oh, great bravado, I have no regrets. I, I, I have some. I'm not going to tell you what regrets I have but I've never regretted accepting Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I've never. And I hope you've accepted him as Christ, Christ as your Savior. And if you haven't, that you'll make him your Savior. Salvation is available to everyone on the planet. If the 8 billion people plus who live on planet Earth turn to Christ today, his grace is sufficient. And all who come to him have you come. With every head bowed and every eye closed. Piano can begin to play softly. Have you called on the Lord? Have you accepted him as your Savior? I would love to show you from the Word of God how to be saved. I know as others here as well would like to take the Bible and just show you verse by verse the verses I went through already how to be saved Christian never minimize what the Lord has done in your life it's a miracle don't minimize it oh you might not have been a biker or some horrible gang or in the depths of the horrible sins doesn't matter. Christ changed your life. Your story. Tell your story. Tell others of what Christ has done for you. Maybe the Lord's placing someone on your heart and life right now, Christian, who you need to tell about your story. Spend a moment. Spend some time right now praying for that person or praying for someone that you can tell. Dear Jesus, thank you. Thank you for all that you have done for us. Thank you that you are still in the business of changing lives. Lord, thank you for the testimony that you have given me that I can proclaim. And there's, I know many here today who have testimonies that uh, you have allowed them to have in their lives. Help us not to be ashamed. Help us to tell the story of you changing our lives. And Lord, I pray if there be any here, any watching online, who don't know you as Savior, Lord, that they would talk to us, reach out to us. Because today, Lord, we'd be happy to show them from the Word of God how to be saved. You're still changing lives. We're all like that leper, or that lame man, I should say. We can't get in on our own. We need Jesus. Lord, I pray you encourage us today to serve you, to be a light for you, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You're dismissed.